and gentlemen, this is Boxing, this is Top Rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. My name is Mark Chinook. We are coming to you live from the MGM Grand in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And to all our veterans watching around the world, happy Veterans Day. And thank you for your service to those serving and who have served. A huge night of fights coming up just around the corner, Saturday, November 14th. The undercards begin at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 o'clock. Eastern on ESPN Plus, and then the co-main and the main event will begin approximately around 7 p.m. Pacific on the network ESPN and ESPN Deportes. It's time to bring up the guys. We need to talk about a lot of things, and we are going to start with the co-main. It is the WBA Super Flyweight Championship of the World, Franco Maloney, too. Please welcome with me on stage now the former champion from Melbourne, Australia, Andrew the Monster Maloney and the reigning, defending WBA Super Flyweight World Champion from San Antonio, Texas, Joshua El Profesor Franco. Gentlemen, thank you so much for, for being here today. I know you've been in the bubble before. Uh, you've been in the bubble before. It is time to do it all again. Let's start with the champ. What's it feel like to be back holding that? It's a, it's a great feeling to be back in the bubble. You know, I, I was here last time and you know, to be here with my world title, it's even better. Did you feel overlooked in the first fight? Uh, maybe I was, maybe I wasn't. I mean, I wasn't really focused on that. I mean, I knew what I was going to do, and that was it. Have things changed? Obviously, they have. But personally, upstairs, mentally, have they changed for you now that you get to walk into the ring as world champion? Of course. You know, I got that confidence uh, on me now, more more confidence on me. I'm getting better as a fighter. I've grown, I've grown since the fight, and I'm just going to continue getting better. I'm going to turn over here, Andrew. Last time you were here, that belt was yours. Now you enter as the challenger. How has your mindset changed coming into this rematch? Uh, well, that loss has lit a fire inside of me. Uh, I've never been so determined to do anything in my life. And uh, I'm so grateful to Top Rank for giving me the opportunity to have this rematch, to redeem myself and to get my world title back. And I've thought about this fight non-stop for the last five months. And finally, it's almost here. Uh, I've done absolutely everything possible over the last five months to make sure that I leave that ring with that belt back around my waist on Saturday night, and uh, I can't wait. Speaking of the first fight, and now getting this opportunity to rematch, what's his greatest strength in the ring that you need to overcome? He's a fighter. He, he comes to fight. He, he put, throws a lot, of, a lot of punches, puts on the pressure, and I knew that before the first fight. I knew he was a good fighter. Um, and as I've said, I was, I was not at my best in that first fight, and I've talked about that a lot, but now I'm looking forward to letting my actions do the talking and to show everyone on Saturday night what I'm all about. You've spent a lot of time recently away from your family, uh, a young child this year, in pursuit of, you know, boxing dreams. What would it mean to you to jump back on that plane and head back to Australia with the belt back around your waist? That belt means everything to me. Um, that belt is you know, the ticket to my my son's future. So it's not just for me, this is for him and for his future. And I'm not leaving that ring on Saturday night without it. I gotta be honest, I'm sitting up here, I feel the energy between the two of you. It's, I almost wanna pull my chair back so you guys can get a little closer, but with COVID precautions, we're not doing that. Uh, you know, we just hinted at it a minute ago that once you become champion, you become a better fighter in all facets, mentally, physically. Robert Garcia in your corner, now the belt in your corner. What has that done for you guys, your camp leading up to today or this weekend? Uh, just, you know, more confidence in ourselves. Um, you know, having Robert in my corner, you know, it's great. You know, uh, he, he has a lot of experience and, you know, we're just, uh, of course, you know, bigger opportunities, you know, after, after Saturday night. I'm excited. Andrew, in some of the, the media leading up to this, some phone calls, you said you're changing tactics for the fight. Was there anything from the first fight that stuck with you? You don't have to give anything away, obviously but you've, you've been vocal that you are changing tactics to this fight. You're going to see a, a much, much better fighter this Saturday night. A completely different fighter, and, and Franco's going to see that. After the first round or two, he's going to go back to his corner and think, who is this guy? That's, that's not who I was in the ring with last time. And uh, I can't wait to show you that on Saturday. Josh, you put him on the canvas last fight. Were you, uh, were you surprised that the rematch happened so quickly? I was, just because of all the damage that I gave to him, all the damage he took. I mean, but he's a fighter, you know, he has heart, so, I mean, you can't, you can't uh, hate him for getting the rematch right away, right away. 
Uh, I don't know about everybody at home, but I'm excited. Gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to just leave your microphones on your chairs. We're going to ask you to move to the X's down here to the front of the platform for your first face-off leading into the weekend. Ladies and gentlemen at home, this is Franco Maloney to the rematch, the WBA Super Flyweight World Championship. Franco Maloney to... All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to speak to those competing in our main event. It is the WBO Welterweight Championship of the World. Let's bring him up on stage. Please welcome from Sheffield, England, the former champ. He is the special one, Cal Brook, and the reigning defending WBO Welterweight Champion of the World from Omaha, Nebraska, Terrence Bud Crawford. Gentlemen, thank you so much for spending time with us today and uh, welcome again to everybody watching around the world. Uh, Kel, I want to start with you because back in February, you, you ran into the champ at Wilder Fury 2 and you flat out told him, hey champ, you're running out of opponents and here we are. Here we are. I've been after this fight for a long time. You know, uh, I think every fight what, puts a pair of gloves on wants to fight the best in the world. And we, uh, we, have to, we, we can't argue that Terence is pound for pound the best fight in the world. So, you know, I've been wanting this fight for a long time. I'm more than ready for this fight. I'm in the best condition in my life. It's my time to uh, become world champion again two times. Champ, what do you remember about that meeting? That was a great time we had in Vegas. The top-ranked family was all here. And I remember he stopped you. He said, hey, and here we are. Fact check. I went up to him. He didn't come up to me. And I asked him, was he going to make weight? And that's when he asked me and told me that I was one and out of opponents. All right. You heard that. He said, hey, you're going to be able to make weight. And there's been a lot of concern about you making welterweight. Any challenges, Camp, for right now? No challenges. I don't know if you've seen any pictures of me, but you can see I'm in fantastic shape. You know, this is the best I've ever been in my career. As I'm getting older, I'm like a fine wine. I'm getting better as, as, as I'm getting older, to be honest with you. I'm not blowing it up in weight. I'm controlling my weight. I've been able to have been top nutritional food to fuel me through my training sessions. So... I'm ready, you know, I am, I am ready for this fight. There's, there's no excuses. I'm absolutely mental and physically in the prime of my life, ready to uh, go out there and, and, and get involved in a war. Do you feel overlooked by the fans, by the media? Does that affect you? Yeah, you know, there's, there's no pressure on me in this fight, but I've put that pressure on myself, you know, to go out there and just to be great. You know, these, these people writing me off saying Terence is, you know, it's an easy fight for him. You know, I think Terence knows himself that I'm not, not an easy fight. He knows this, and I put the pressure on myself because before I hang this club, my gloves up, you know, I want, I've always wanted to bring the best out of me, and, and, and since I knew this fight got made, I've been took myself away from my daughter, from, from my missus and my family, took myself out to training camp and pushed myself, you know, from, from, from the day one till, till right now. So there's no excuse I'm ready to go out there and perform the best I can perform. Champ, you've been in the bubble now a few times to watch your teammates. You think that gives you an idea of what to expect? Give you a little advantage here in the bubble? Well, at the end of the day, you gotta fight the fight. Fans can't fight for you. Um, yeah, it's kind of a bummer that the fans is not gonna be able to attend the fight, but at the same time, this is nothing new to me. Like I said, I didn't fall in arenas where it was 50 people, you know? So I, I know what to expect been there before and come Saturday is nothing nothing gonna be different I want to talk to you and ask about Monday's media call because uh, Kel said he believes he can make you quit on the stool that was on the media call what was your reaction to that you don't have to you know what I mean live up to his words you know I'm not the one that ever quit in a fight you know I can't say the same for him though 
he referred to you as the pound for pound champ. ESPN's got you number one as the pound for pound champ. Do you feel that puts a little bit more pressure on you when you enter the ring? Do you carry that with you? It's a, it's a mythical title, but do you carry that with you knowing that I'm the number one on the planet right now? Well, n not really, you know, because I always felt like I was number one. You know, I always stated that I felt like I was number one pound for pound in the world. So I don't see uh, why people would think that it will add any pressure to me. This is, you know, what I do. And I'm comfortable with going in the ring this weekend uh, like any other fight. I love it. Kel, I want to read a couple fights here. Wilder over Fury, Honey Gone over Curry, Lewis over Holyfield. What would a Kel Brook victory over Crawford rank on that list coming onto U.S. soil? I think for me it'd be, uh, I'd have to argue with the number one. What I've been through and, you know, for me to come through, not just win, not just take a world champion, but to be the world champion, what everyone considers pound for pound number one. You know, but I love a challenge, you know. Um, I'm not gonna shy away from this fight, you know. I know, I know how good Terence is. I know it's gonna be a, an hard fight. That's why I prepared the way I have. You know, I'm, I'm a big welterweight. I can punch with both, both hands. You know, I can switch. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen everything. You know, I've done this all my life. This is what I do. So, as Warriors, we're gonna go out there and just gonna put, put on a great show for the, the fans that are watching it. You mentioned and you've been talking about your shape a lot now, sitting here on stage, about how great your camp has been, how you physically stay in shape in between fights. It's been a minute since your last fight. Talk a little bit specifically about camp, and you mentioned being away from family, what that's done to get you to this point. You know, because, you know, when I'm, where I'm from in Sheffield, you know, it's, it's a ride away from the gym, you know, and you can, there's plenty of distractions for where I live, you know, plenty of distractions, I always start, tightening that diet up and the training, getting closer to the fight and sometimes it's too late. For someone like Terence, I took myself away as soon as I knew this fight were on and give myself the perfect opportunity to knuckle down and realise why I'm away from my family, you know, to be great and this Saturday is one of them nights. Champ, you've been in the bubble. It can get pretty quiet in there, but uh, I've got it written down here that your mother and your grandmother and a small, you know, Omaha contingency is going to be in the bubble. What's that going to mean to you, to be able to hear their voices clearly like that in the bubble cheering you on? Well, it means a lot being that, you know, I never really had too many fights without my family actually being there to support me. And uh, it just added a little more motivation to me going out there and taking care of business come Saturday. Kel, before we wrap up, you got the champ sitting right here. Anything you want to say? There's nothing I can say, the, talk, the talking's done. There's nothing I can say, all the, all the work is done in the gym. It's just time to perform now, I'm ready. Champ? I wish him the best. Awesome. Gentlemen, I'm gonna ask you to put your microphones. This is boxing, this is Top Rank. We will see you Saturday, November 14th for the WBO Welterweight Championship of the World. Happy Veterans Day, everybody.